1941, the Norfolk and Western started building their J-Class 484 Northern Streamlined Locomotives. They ended up building a total of 14 of them. Then along in the 70s, Bachman decided to come around and they decided to build their own little version of the Norfolk and Western J-Class 484 Northern. This is a Gen 1. We're going to revisit the gear issues. They've always got broken axle gears and then the timing goes off and it goes awry. Well, we did a video on this not too long ago. It was deemed a success going the long way around the barn. There's been some improvements from the guy that does the 3D printing. I buy him from Dan. He's got some new stuff. This locomotive was sent in to me by Lance. Sleeper Barbecue YouTube username. He, he worked me over, worked me over to do this. I didn't want to do another Bachman ever, but he kept working me over set everything up. He sent everything here. All I had to do was sit down, enjoy myself, <laughs> and do it. So here's my story. This is what it took. This is what's involved in fixing up a Bachman first generation. That's the ones with the really, really bad pancake motors in them. You're picking me up when I'm laying down. Yep. That's what it takes to get one of these, hopefully back up on the rails. So here's what we're working on today. The old Bachman made in Hong Kong. This tender doesn't do anything. It doesn't do any picking up or nothing. This had had some pieces that were fragile on the sides here, which makes it super ugly to look at. And this, this isn't good at all. I was told that it doesn't run, but they are unable to determine if the axle gears are broken in it. I want to get this boiler shell off of here. One bolt up here in the front. This way we can really look at it. Something back over here. Oh, yep. Yeah, there's the smoke unit right there. Falled out of it. And it's got the old motor. Sure, headlight just fell out. Here's the headlight. How are we supposed to be able to work this? What are we supposed to do here with this? Thank you, Bachman. You're the best. Let's open this up right down here, and then at least we can see them axle gears. This is how you can tell. Now this is a generation one because of the way that this motor looks right here. If it was a gen two, it'd have a can motor sitting in there. This is the old Bachman split frame. This front, oh, yep, there's gappage. These trucks are, they're just being a pill in my book. So they get to go away. Sit down here and flop in the wind. Now you can flop in the wind someplace else. Trying to look in here, see what it takes. I took the screws off. It shouldn't be much harder, much more harder than this, but I, I think it's locked in right here. And I believe that this whole entire bottom plastic piece is going to come off. Here, something's happening. There's what I was looking for right there. One more, right, right back, to back here. Work with, there it is. Here we go, what's what's going on here? All this junk, all that detail. This has got one broken gear, only one. That's strange. This one is shot because I can spin the drivers. So that's gonna come out of time. This one is tight. This one is loose. And the front one's so loose that it actually fell apart. Looks like they put these pins in right here. So you can't even unbolt it to work on it. Trying to see if I can maybe pull these out. Unbelievable. Let's see if these 3D printed parts even look the same. Two sets here. Okay, these are the wrong ones. That's for the second gen right there. Here is first gen ones. You know, I just wonder how we're going to go about timing these. How we're gonna go about installing these. There ain't no way that that is even close to the same size. Rooting around inside here, and we just found something else that's interesting. This piece of gear came out from down in here, down under here, rooting around. I see we've got some screws right here to pull this pancake motor. I've got this horrible feeling that the gear reduction gears are broken. Am I gonna be able to lift that out of there? Whew. Look at that little humdinger. Yep, there's a gear. Oh, well, there he is right there. And that'll about shut her down. Oh, there's a screw right down in here. So this frame shouldn't even have came apart. I guess I just, the motor was holding it together here in the back. See, these gears break when it gets out of time. And then the valving binds, seizes up, and the motor's just a chugging away, spinning, and 
Something's got to give. That don't look nothing like a truck drive. It's got this huge reduction gear right through here. Let's see if we can get this motor to even do something. That ain't even looking good. It ain't even trying. <laughs> that motor's completely burned out. Yeah, there it is right there. Good old, good old split frame Bachmans. People are still lining up for these things. Look, look at, I did a little, is that a screw? Oh, I need that. People are still lining up on the dang eBay to buy these things. I decided to just, to just eBay search a Bachman 484. And then all these came up. You can see that the axles are broken in it because the valving, the timing, the rods, the side rods are all broken. Time after time after time again. And look at the prices these things are getting. Ugh. And, and, and the, the ad even says, does not run, does not work. And there's guys out there that are throwing their hard-earned money down for these. We got to find a way to fix it. We do. I, I called up this fella, his name's Lance. And he's got the YouTube username Sleeper Barbecue. And he's been nice enough to go through every one of my videos and watch them and comment on them. So this guy's really rooting. He's really rooting for me. I was his last hope, Obi-Wan. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if the motor, you know, wasn't burned out. Then it wouldn't be so bad if that gear wasn't broken. So let's root around and I happen to have a GS4 that was set up to be, to be parts. It was a parts locomotive from old Christopher up there in Grafton, Ontario. Is that right? Graft, Grafton, Grafton, Ontario, Can Canada, up, up. I'm going to root around in there and see what we can find. If we can find that gear in this couple parts, maybe, you know, we've got the stuff to fix the axles. I'll figure out a way to get the, the rods off these wheels so we can individually work on them. We'll get it. We'll get it. I'm going to try. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I opened up this motor just to root around inside and see what's going on. And when I, when I did, these brush springs, they're right there. And you see how they don't have any spring left in them? Then all of a sudden I got happy. Because that happens when you heat them up. When the motor's stalled out, the amps, they go through this and it, and it warms them up and then they, and then it doesn't make contact. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe this motor's not burned out. Here's how you check it. You check in between these segments right here. Here to here. Here to here. Here. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's not shorted to the ground, which is a good thing. So there ain't nothing wrong with that. I just got to... Maybe fix them brushes, stretch them out a little bit. Look at that cute little thing. <laughs> That's smaller than the Tycos. Plastic motor housing. Oh my, they have just over, went overboard. You remember this, this one, this is with the, yeah. Nothing like parting one of these out, huh? Here's the split frame in this little jewel of the Nile. And that motor, it's even smaller than this one. It's buried up inside here. It's got a brass gear. Yeah, that one does too. Can you believe it? That's what's powering these things. Guys are laying down $100, $150, $200 for these. Well, it did turn out that this one here had the right gear in it. We got a gear. We might need to rob the brush, the brush springs out of it if I can't fix those just a wee bit. Now this one here, I got up underneath of it with the screwdriver and I was just a prying little, little bit of back and forth and back and forth just so I could pull that out. First one came out and it looked like, looked like that. It was a successful removal. And then I went to the next one. Here's the first one, came out real good. Working on the next one just as diligently as I could and that thing broke off in there. Poof. Well, that ain't gonna work. We gotta, we gotta separate these so I can work on them. We gotta work on them and, t and quarter them Put them back in without the ding, without all the side rods on it. And then put the side rods on. Have to, have to. I, well, you don't have to, but it's pretty dang hard to sit here and work on these while you're fighting with all this linkage. It's already, it's already being a hassle. Now this GS4, it didn't come out. They don't, they're the same way. Now the second gen, there was hex nuts in there that I could just unscrew. So I'm curious. If I could put a little bit of heat on there, help loosen up this glue 
that's on there and see if it works better. I need better. I need more hands now, obviously, because this doesn't want to stay while I'm trying to pry on it. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't hear the bitterness in my voice, do you? Come on, just some. Let's heat this up. Some. How much? Just some. We might really have something here if I can feel that it's doing something. Careful, easy, slow, gentle, easy. Oh, okay, there. So there's, there's another one. So what's the plan here? Well, I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to leave that. I ain't, no, I ain't going to miss. Holy moly. There's a lot going on there. Because then I'll be able to, you can see the rod guides, they're separate. This is the one we're working on. Split this frame from this little guy right up here. Yeah. And then this part right here, you pry up on it and that removes that from there. Oh, I hope that light wasn't in the way the whole time. Oh, it, it oh, pretty much was. Oh, <laughs> now I can see better. Yeah, no, oh, right in front of the camera. <sighs> now we need to go back. I got to show you. I got to show you what you missed. We pried these chests off. They were they were sitting up here, and and they're they latch on from the top to from the bottom to the top. So I just took a screwdriver underneath of it and was able to roll it off. Oh, oh Jesus! Sure went on easy. We gotta glue that now. We got both of those off. We opened this thing up, and then we seen this little peeny thing, and then I sat and I laughed about it and I made a couple jokes, and then this is the one out of the GS4. So why in Lords would they ever do, it's like this thing is actually made to break. Once the, they that's the only reason why that would look like that. So when the axles twist, get out of time, seize up, they break. <sighs> ah, so we got a new gear there. That's pathetic. And then I made another joke about Bachman and, and, I, and I think I realized that Lant was in the way. So here we are, we're back up to speed. I pulled all the little guys out of this, this set here. I've got wheels. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up. We're going to get the motor assembled, try to get it running, get the springs fixed if we can. If we can't, rob them from something else. And get this going so it's like the motors. And then we'll be back down to just this. That was the original job was fixing the broken axles. These, they always turn into more. I've only been doing this now for four hours. Farting around. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got everything cleaned up here. All the old greases came off of it from using the old odorless mineral spirits and the Q-tip tricks. This one was nice and clean, so it didn't take too long. We got gears here. We got motors. I even refreshed my mind on what bolts went where because I took it apart really fast. Didn't pay that much attention. The first thing I want to do is see if we're going to be able to salvage these springs. Is that the first thing I want to do? Is it really the first? Here's the spring. This thing, uh, that thing is, it definitely does not have spring anymore. And that didn't work. I took it and I crushed it. There has a spring. There's spring. Is that other one going to work any better? Catch just one curl. Don't crush it. Stretch it. Get in here. Stretch it. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. Got ourselves some multi-purpose synthetic super lube. Well, just a tiny little bit of grease. Down here on this end. Just some. Cleaned all this out with the Q-tips. There was even, honest to God, there was even a thrust washer. It's right, it's right there. I found it down inside there. Couldn't, couldn't believe one end of it had a thrust washer so we need to give we need to give it some love get that guy in there this side here either i didn't know it was there and i lost it when i wasn't looking or it just never ever had one it's one of the two 
Luckily, this motor's set up where a guy can get in there. You can take it apart or clean it. Yes, significantly easier. Hold this together. Get these two top screws in. I even like how they put Loctite on them. Number two. Now we got to put the brushes in it without me lobbing them, launching them across the room. Come on. Oh, this nerve wracking. That was an exact fit. There's no coming in at an angle with this stuff. That's for sure. Now these guys, they come up from the bottom. And of course I took them off and I didn't pay much attention. This is the pickup, which gets it from one side of the frame or the other side of the frame. And these can go on either way. And if I don't, so if I put these on backwards, it's gonna cause the motor to run backwards in what would normally be the forward position. Let me see if I got some footage of that, because it's pretty important. Lo and behold, I did have some footage of me flopping these things around. The short one goes over here and the long one goes over here. Short being this pickup is bent like that. And this pickup is long like that. Yep. Squirrels are back. This, it's a little deformed, a little bit. I wonder if I can maybe straighten it out some on this toothpick. Maybe. Get all the loops in there. I should have done that in the first place. Hey, that's a really good idea. This is a lot better idea than just freestyling it. Yeah. In fact, if I play my cards right, I can just do this. Scrape it off down into the hole. Oh. oh, they're a little taller. They're sticking out like a quarter of an inch. Probably more than they ever would. Oh, okay. One, get the screw in. Come on. Do that one more time. Fix this crooked spring that I made here. Collapse it, straighten it out on the thing. Oh, yeah. Get it in the hole, get our device. You think she's gonna run? Let's throw the transformer after it. How'd I get all these tools everywhere? Oh my God. I wanna see motion, movement. Talk to me. Yep. Loving it. it. Smells like it's got an ozone odor to it. I wonder if we should run it in some. Strange vibration too. Oh, I can smell it. Is it gonna be happy or is it gonna be sad? Reverse. All right, then. Now these gears, they came out and I wasn't paying any attention <laughs> whatsoever. It kind of fell apart on me, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna say this was here and then I'm gonna guess that this big bugger was here. I'm gonna guess that. And I'm gonna say that the little bugger was underneath and it kind of looks like it goes the same direction no matter what. That doesn't look right at all. No, that does not. Where's that old, oh shoot. This gear here, oh no, that's not the same. Where'd that gear come from? I got a hold of the wrong gear. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> hmm? No. No. Oh, you dicks. That diameter hole right there is different than this diameter hole. You rotten, rotten buggers. Dang you. That just shut it down. It's a completely different gear. It's so close. Because this gear doesn't actually, it's got some gap in between this post and this outer edge. And this one, when it's on it, it does not have that. It's very, very close. So it's got like one tooth difference. Well, I did the wrong thing and I glued that gear back together. It's been about 20 minutes for it to set up. Is it gonna work? I don't, I don't know. What's it made out of? What is this stuff? We'll give it the old college try. This white gear. Oh, we gotta get some grease on the outside of this one because it's gonna be in here on this one. Gotta use this gear because the other gears are all the wrong gears. Go figure. And this gear is gonna go on right up in here. Once I get everything in and set straight, this feller, he's going to come in in here, get locked into place. Hmm? Yeah? Put a couple of these, oh, no, 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 silver colored ones in. Hold this motor in place while we build this split frame back together. That is like the most delicate thing. It feels like I'm working on grandpa's in pocket watch or something like that how wispy these gears are 
these little white things here they go down below like so one there one there we've got this spacer up front here so that in this frame it's going to go together like so make sure those white things are in that's in there two screws are going to go in there this little screw is going to go in in the front Two more screws over here to hold this wonderfully powerful little electric motor in. Powerhouse. You could tell when you turn it on that the power beater runs faster. But let's test it. 50%. One on one frame rail, one on the other side. Things are happening. I can't tell. Because my fingers are in the way. Yeah, I guess that's what we get. That's, that's it. Well, I guess I got that motor and that gear fixed. Ah. Ah, oh, the happiness, the joys. This is what it's all about. Fixing the stuff. Don't replace it, repair it. Will it last? Nah. Now we gotta go to these, and these, and these, and quartering it. The rearmost wheel had this traction tire on it. We got lots of drive gears. I got four I get to maybe break. These ones with this extra lever on them like that, that's for a smoking unit to trigger the to pulse the smoker but these are all axles right here i picked up a set of these needle files machinists needle file sets this is the only little round one that's small enough to do what we need what i want is i want these to go in a little on the loose side and then i want to put some ca on them because the ca will will hold on metal now the key to getting them in we're going to file these open some is it gonna work this time? I broke that pin off inside there, right there, trying to take this wheel apart. Now I've got to, I gotta get that out. I gotta figure out a way to drive that little, little teeny tiny pin out so we can put this wheel set together. We got one gear put together. Unbelievable, it worked out really, really well. I had to get that thing out of there and I just used a track nail like this. Happened to be the right size to come in from the back. Gave it a couple taps, tap, 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 and that thing fell out. Here, the little chunk right there came right out of there. So once again, touch it up on what we did. Here's here's the little, little axle guy right here. We just get one side, open some, just enough for the to get the thing started in there. A little CA on this axle shaft, because I want everything to sit. Oh, the CA dried up in the tip. You know, rotten, oh, these dang little things. I want just a little, just some. So I want that to set up on there. Is this the one I prepped? I believe it is. Get it started. I'm going to use this to help it, to press it straight, straight on, in. Here we go. That's what we got right there. Prep the other side. See if this wheel's gonna start. Nope, not yet. Oh, the sounds of living on the poor end of town. Yes, uh. Seems to be going in. Put a little more CA, just because once it's quartered, I want it to stay there. And I'm hoping that this resin responds to CA. Carefully, easily. Okay, now it's coming around. Yes. Give me a little more. Over here. What do we got? Is it rolling straight? Sorry, yes. I want one down. This one over here has got to be straight back. Turning it, turning it, turning it. Straight down. And I can look through the spokes and I can see the other one. That one straight back, straight back. Ooh. I'm digging it. We just got to keep doing this. Is that springs down inside there? Right here? Yeah, sure is. Pick up springs for the axles. Good Lord, I just found those in there. And they're bent, of course. See that's crooked? I don't know if we can straighten them up on this. Wow. This locomotive's got a lot going on on it, that's for sure. Stretch those out some. Well, I'm gonna keep putting these axles together, getting all this stuff set up and the timing. This one here I glued. Yeah, it feels pretty solid. So I can put the rods on and get this back to going like it's supposed to.
Them gears went on so dang easy. Um, there's nothing. I didn't even break a single one or nothing. Everything worked out just good. So you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to call up Dan, the guy that, that made these gears. We talk, we visit, we chat, you know. I like to think that I'm part of his development team, but I think he's probably pretty smart and has his own development team going on. But let's go talk with him real fast. I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here with Dan. This is the gentleman that made the... 3D printed gears that I've been messing with for the last couple of repairs here. The first one, it didn't go so well for me, but he tells me that that there is there was success with his gears before I came along. I just had a hard time with them, I suppose. He tells me that he's redid the resin on them so that it's got a little more flexibility to it. So we've got a brand new set of gears that he's got, brand new production runs with a change. What is it that you've done that made them a little better? So I... Uh... Switched over to a different resin. Um, as we originally were talking, uh, it seemed like force that was applied to them uh, seemed to have been a little bit too much, which uh, based off of what I was looking at, seemed to have broke them for you. Sure. Uh, but yeah. that's, you know, it, it happens. It's not a big deal. Basically, I uh, migrated over to a different type of resin. Um, I've adjusted the uh, hold size to be a little bit bigger from a perspective of trying to be able to enter it. And uh, based off of my understanding uh, from our chat we had earlier today that uh, it seems that that has fixed your problem. Yeah, these ones went really good. Uh, also, after I visited with you on the first time I did these gears and you'd mentioned the micro files yes. and, you know, doing a little, little, little tweaking a little bit is it to, 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 to them to make it easier. Well, I'm used to like Atherin gears that you buy brand new for their diesels and you can just jam the and, you know, yeah. really, really heavy hand it. Uh, there was a bit of a learning curve. I always kind of thought, well, maybe because the gears show up without really a lot of instructions for, you know, Neanderthals like me. <laughs> and if there would been that in there, you know, to file them or, or this or that, it might have been more beneficial for my part. But, you know, being I'm relatively new at modeling, maybe guys that have been modeling for a long time know that you just you just trim stuff and you gentle it. <laughs> you well, so I can tell you, I can tell you from my perspective, I have not been in this field very long at all. I actually went down the exact same road you went down towards the beginning. Hey, there's a guy that has, has gears on Shapeway. Basically, I bought them. I put them in my engine. I turned it engine on and it snapped instantly. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be a better method to this. I looked around and I was super annoyed. I couldn't find anything. So I'm like, screw it. I'll do it myself. And that's how the parts became a thing. You were also telling me that you're making parts for other Bachman locomotives in your yes I, I've, been, I've been slowly at, like as they as things have come in and people are like well do you have parts for this i'm like no but if you can send them to me i'm likely able to make them for you just take some time i started off with the gen ones i believe it was then i migrated over to gen twos um, I've been working on the RS fives and I just got done dealing with the Athens P one five, five Oh two seven drive shafts. My understanding that there's a, there's a need for those out there because I've had like five or six people ask for them. So that should be showing up in the uh, eBay links soon. Right on, right on. And you were also telling me earlier that you're starting to do the repairs for guys for these gen ones and gen twos. I, I am. Um, it's one of those things where they just start showing up. It's like, well, I guess I could take care of that <laughs> so i got your address here on this on this package that you sent me with the the gears that are in it i would recommend uh <laughs> throwing a email over first that'd probably be the better option and okay. then we can go from there what's the email uh dw5304 at gmail.com right on well i'm glad that we've had a really good success with the second batch here boy i, I was able to pretty heavy handedly work with them, put them on, and not a single one broke, gave me any issues whatsoever. It was nice visiting with you. Nice to see that you're building other things out there. Thanks for popping in with me, Daniel. No problem at all, Ron. All right, bye-bye. Beautiful Sunday morning now. I've got all the rods put on, and is that not a pain in the butt? It, it is, is what I'm trying to say. A very, very ha big hassle hours spent doing this come to find out this wheel set and this wheel set since they've got well i never took this the stuff off this one but this one here there's two rods on here so the boss that these pins are going through is twice as long on those so when you take these apart 
I would almost have to say do one wheel at a time or mark them very, very well so you don't get them confused because you need that extra length of that boss to put these on. So I had it taken apart and put together quite a few times. After I had it all assembled, I got the old super lube out and my, and my toothpick and I put a little grease down in there. Decided I'm going to film this very first time. We're gonna put a little juice to it. We're gonna put 50% in it. I was running it with this wheel, not hooked up to these three up here, letting this spin around. Everybody was somewhat happy. Let's see what happens now. Are we gonna have a, a bind? Yeah. And there's no way to freewheel this thing either. I can hold this up and these turn. Lots of unhappiness. Can I help this process out? Let's throw a little, little oil. Let's oil all this stuff up. And I need, I need everything to come back online like right now. There's a lot on this thing too. I run it up and down the track with just these three wheels all hooked up and it was, it was doing its thing. How am I gonna keep that down in there? Am I gonna have to jam this thing on? My goodness, this is not fun. All right, well, we got that dang cover put on right there. What a hassle. It does not, it, it, it was a fight and a fight and a fight. Jam it, push it down. You think something's gonna break? Oh man, this isn't for the faint hearted, I tell you. And my heart's pretty faint. If this was mine, I'd have it against the wall by now. Still don't know if this is gonna work. Is that the frame I'm touching? Yes. We're not getting a lot. Well, here's a fun little problem right here now. The pickups on this motor, if I go to one half the frame, I've got this brush. When I go to the other half the frame, I don't have this brush now. So now we gotta pull the motor out and this clip that we just put on the bottom probably won't let that motor just slip out. Somehow that pickup that's going over here ain't doing a very good job. I moved the chassis back and forth a couple times under its own power and then everything started to go downhill really quite bad. Can I turn this off? You can see the brushes flashing. Oh, yup. I took this motor out and I got this gear out because I thought that maybe that gear that I glued together down there it broke. But you can see, I can spin this and I can see that it's all still together. It is do what it's supposed to do. So real quick, you can see that I swapped out the replacement 3D gear with the original gear and I used CA glue to hold it onto the axles. Now we gotta jam this thing back on, which is an, an act of Congress. It holds all the wheels from fl slopping and flopping around and it pushes down on everything and, and it hangs up in the valve gear so you've got to gently work it through all of this. Getting close. Something's happening. Yeah, that was pretty straightforward. Now over here, this little tiny chunk right there goes right through here and it holds all this together so when this slide is sliding that it doesn't fall out. That's not glueable plastic at all. And then my two-part epoxy, it's old, it didn't stick. Five minute, my aching. See, and you gotta have that in there because if you don't, then this falls down and then this falls out. Oh, there's just so, this the level of happiness that's taking place. Am I getting anywhere? Why does, why is a five minute epoxy not a five minute epoxy? How long does it take for a JB Weld to set up? 46 hours? Ah, I don't got that kind of time. Let's see if we can run it like this. We just want to see if it doesn't hop gears. We want this on video in case it breaks. Then I have it on video. It's trying, come on. Spinny, spinny. Yep. Here we are. Back to, back to this thing. I mean, it's Sunday now and I've got hours, six hours or more into this thing. Take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together. I sat around and I thought about something. The original gear that I had for the GS4 in the reduction, the little tiny reduction gear, remember how it was bigger than the normal gear that was in it and I had to glue it back together? And the one I glued together was a little smaller. And then it dawned on me, well, there can't be 
How can you have axle gears that are the same if you've got a larger or a smaller reduction gear? So I gave Dan a call. He says, yeah, there's, there is a type one, generation one, and there's a type two, generation one, or variance one, variance two of the gen one. And then it's like, oh my God. He goes, well, I sent you both sets of gears. I'm like, what? He goes, one's a little bit lighter colored than the other one. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's two different colors. One's, uh, yeah. I go, you know, a note, a note would be nice. Yeah, you're, you're right. I guess I should have, I should have said something about that. <laughs> so now I got to pull the bottom off that thing again, put another drive gear on it again, put it all back together again. This is what happens from lack of communication. The problem is that a lot of people believe that it took place and most of the time it don't. So I'm gonna do that and we've seen how it's done three times now. So I'm gonna be back after I've got the, the next, the third time I've put a drive gear in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me show you the difference in the gears. I'll show you that. Okay. You get the old calipers out here and you see the, I mean, we're talking one's light gray, one's a little bit of a darker gray. We got a smaller gear, so I believe we're going to be using the larger gear. Coming in at millimeters, this one should be pushing 13.3. And the littler guy to see, yeah, completely different. Completely. A note, just a note. Some instructions. Yeah. I'm starting to get really good at getting this thing apart. Here's our original gear. 12.5, maybe, ish. This one, 12.55. This thing plus or minus a lot for some reason. So let's try this gear right here and see what happens. I decided to go ahead and put it all back together right now because this is, this is it. This is the one last run we're going to make with it. Either it's going to move and it's going to be quiet and it's going to do its thing or it's, that's, I'm done. It's just this, no, let's see what this does. Little power, little power. A little more power, more power. You're really upsetting me. Does not like corners. As soon as it gets in that corner, man, does it just shut down. Uh-huh. Yeah, switches and everything else. Okay. Reverse. More reverse. No, not very good. Forward. Go forward. Gets to that curve and it hangs up. Wobbling. Oh, oh. Tender ran into a transformer. This went on and on and on and on. And I don't know if you could tell, but there was, there was some anger in my voice. Ah, oh, good times. Yes, things break. Oh. I don't think this is ever going to pull anything. I really don't. It moved, it moved back and forth on the track some. It sounded a lot better, better than it has probably in years. But I just, I don't believe that that little motor that's the size of a nickel, it's the size of a nickel, is going to be able to pull anything down the track. If you get an opportunity to pass on a Gen 1 Bachman steam locomotive, you should, you should do it. The 2s with the can motor, they're a lot better. But these 1s, no, no. So, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks for hanging out. This one's been kind of a long video out there. 33 percenters. It's good to see you guys down here at the end. I see you. I see you over there. Yes, you too. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.